Hi everyone, I'm Gavin and welcome back to another new video. Today we're going to look at Form 2 Science Chapter 2 talking about um, these animals and the interaction between animals. So the previous lesson we have learned what? We have learned how these animals interact with each other through things like symbiosis you know, and within symbiosis we have what? We have commensalism, mutualism, parasitism and after that we have what? We have uh, this um, prey predator and uh, competition and uh, we have within competition we have interspecific inter competition uh, which is between different species and intra-specific competition which is within the same species. So since we know that there is some sort of interaction or some sort of relationship between the same species of animals or even with different species of animals, now we want to see how we apply this interaction into the real world. And by the way, since this is a method or this is a way that people apply this theory, theory, because we are learning theory, the theory of this interaction between animals. So since we have understood the theory. Now what we want to know is how to apply this. And since it's talking about application, this is the best time for your teachers to set exam question is this K bar question. K bar question. Okay. So now, since we learned that there is this prey predator relationship between animals, now we want to see how biological control can be used in this uh, agricultural sector. You know, as a, as, a, as a main way for them to, uh, to make sure that they, uh, their yield or the, the, the products that they gain from planting this rubber tree or durian tree or, or palm oil, this, uh, pro this production or this product that they have is the maximum. We need to use biological control. Okay, now, so let's see. Biological control, from the name, you know that uh, uh, this, uh, the, the word bio here gives you a hit that we are doing something using biology. So it means what? It means that this is a natural way of controlling. Because if we don't use a biological way to control, the opposite, the opposite is using what we call a chemical. Okay? Chemical means of controlling. Things like what? Things like fertilizer. Okay? Things like fertilizer is a chemical. Things like what else? Things like this uh, uh, pesticide. Pesticide is also a chemical because you are going to go through the factory where they make these uh, chemicals and then you are going to use it as a farmer eh? or as a as a palm oil. You know, this palm oil, kelapa sawit, uh, this, uh, the owner, then you will try to use these things, chemical. But now we are not using chemical. We are not using chemical. We are using biology, biological. Okay, so let's see. Biological control is a method to control the population of pests by using natural organisms that live in the area. So, Let's see, uh, there are two living things here. Uh. Number one is this pest. Number one is this pest. What is number two? Number two is natural organisms that live in the area. So if you can see this interaction between these two, you actually can realize that this is actually talking about the prey. And this is talking about the predator, if you can see. So by the way, prey is the one that is being eaten. Uh. Prey is the one that is being eaten. Predator is the one that is going to eat, going to eat, going to hunt and going to eat. So, what this means is, biological control is a method for the farmer. Number one. Number two, owner of this uh, kelapa sawit land, of this oil, palm oil land, to control the population, means the quantity or the amount. Okay, The amount or the quantity of the pest. What is pest? Pest means the, uh, 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 this prosa. Right? Uh, means uh, this is a makhluk uh, prosak lah, so it means that this is a the, the destroy. It will destroy your products or destroy your crops or destroy your palm oil. So it's pest. This is bad thing, huh? Bad, bad, bad. It's bad thing. We don't want this. We want to destroy, uh, destroy this pest. So how do we destroy this pest? We use these natural organisms that live in the area. Maksudnya predator. Why? Because we know that when there is predator, when there is prey, naturally. Through, through the relationship, through the relationship of prey predator, the predator will go in makan the prey. Maksudnya, in the end of the day, prey akan hilang sebab the predator will be going to eat all this prey. Eh? So if you can see, it is often used in gardens, eh? farms or orchards, which is that means you are planting either let's say padi or you are planting palm oil, you are planting durian, you are planting kelapa, you are planting uh, 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 what else? Uh, um, orchards, uh, that means uh, any kind of fruits also can, uh, you will use this method okay, to replace chemical pesticide. Okay? Chemical pesticide. So this is the one that you will be able to see in the picture where these uh, farmers, they will use, yeah, they will 
tie a big tanki of pesticide behind their back. Huh? So this is the farmer. Okay, they will tie this uh, pesticide behind their back. They will bring a sprayer, a sprayer. They will go and spray. They will spray the pesticide on the on the crops, on their paddy or whatever. Okay, and this pesticide is going to uh, harm. If you realize harm not just only the pest not just only the pest but other things as well okay so if you can see now it brings us to the second point the second point about how this biological control method only kill unnecessary pests because if you use this chemical if you use this chemical what happens is you are going to kill not just not just the pest but also other things such as the good insects or even the plant itself you may harm the plant so you are killing unnecessary pests. Uh, you are killing these uh, things that are unnecessary to be killed. Okay, but if you are talking about only the pests that you don't want, of course we kill. We kill the pests. Okay, and should not bring negative effects to other organisms. Yes, should not bring negative effects through biological control. Why? Because we know that there is a relationship, hubungan antara predator and prey. Means you will only have a predator eating a prey. This predator will not go and eat other prey. Eh, that means if you're talking about owl, owl and a rat means the owl will only go and eat the rat. Do you think the owl will go and go and eat other things? Uh, say the caterpillar or even ladybird. He won't go and eat the ladybird. Why? Because the predator, which is the owl, only wants to eat the rat. So he will go to eat the rat. Hey, that's the prey. So the, the this uh, by the way is the advantages. The advantages. Kebaikan. Kebaikan menggunakan biological control is number one. You will be able to kill unnecessary pests. Unnecessary pests means the pest that is not useful for you. Ah, basically unnecessary. Maksudnya apa? Not useful for you. Not useful. You 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 tak nak tak nak this pest. That's why it's called unnecessary pest. Killing unnecessary pests. Number one. Number two. It will not bring negative effect to other organism. Sebab the hubungan antara predator and the prey is very direct. One predator eat a prey. That's all. Nothing else. That's all. Eh? And what is the advantage number three? Is it will save cost. Save cost. Why? Because imagine if you are going to spray this, ah, spray this, ah, spray this, ah. You are not going to spray this once a day, uh, uh, once a week, you know. You are probably going to spray this uh, uh, two or three times a week. Two or three times a week. Eh? That means every two or three days you will go and spray. That means you are going to, uh, you know, spend your money buying a whole tanki of this chemical pesticide, which will waste your money. And as the farmer, Okay, petani ataupun the owner of this uh, kelapa sawit, ladang kelapa sawit, you don't want to waste your money. You want to save as much money as you can because you are profit. You, know, you all want to get uh, this profit. So, save cost is good for them. Okay, number four, does not pollute the environment. Why does it not pollute the environment? Because, uh, let's think about it. Let's think about it now. Now, let's look at this chemical pest again. Let's, let's see again. If you are going to spray this uh, padi, you are going to spray this padi, you are going to spray this paddy, you are going to spray this paddy, you are going to spray this paddy, you are going to spray this paddy. What happens is, do you realize or not, do you realize that this paddy actually is sitting on top of what? Inter on top of the tanah. 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 Okay? The tanah, the soil. And what this tanah is going to do is, this tanah is going to connect it to parit. Huh? Or the longkang. Okay? The sewers on the side of the ladang. Okay? In, on the side of the paddy field, you are going to have this drain. Or even you are going to have other pieces of land. Other pieces of land surrounding it. So what happens is, when when the chemical pesticide, it go into the plant, it go into the plant, or it go into the soil, it go into the soil, the rainwater, air, uh, this uh, air hujan, will bring the pesticide, will bring the pesticide to the longkang. And it's going to flow to where? Flow to the, flow to the, the river. And at the river, no, this is where you know. This this where you know. This is not in your bandar, not in the bandar, not Sungai Klang. Ah, this one is at kampung, no, at kampung, no. This ladang or this uh, this paddy field is at the kampung, no, at the kampung. What happens is people are going to take bath at the river, going to drink the river water, going to wash clothes at the river, going to use the river to, uh, to, to you know, even uh, use it to cook, uh, to boil water or to uh, uh, do whatever of the daily activities. So what happens is, you are getting all the, this chemical, this chemical into the water. That means you are, you are what? You are contaminating, contaminating, or in other words, polluting the water, polluting the water because 
air hujan, air hujan, rain water will bring the pesticide into the parit, the longkang, or even to the, you eh, know, the ones that the farmer will dig, okay, dig up the soil, and then it is going to be brought to the river, then slowly, slowly into the seas, slowly, slowly into the oceans, slowly, slowly it will go to people's houses. So it is going to destroy not just the environment but also uh, the and um, humans as well right? so it will pollute the environment if you use chemical pesticide but if you use biological control which is predator terus menangkap prey you are not going to pollute why? predator eat the prey what is there to pollute? nothing else to pollute it's just eating then dah finish you are going to be left with only bones on the ground which is not going to harm anything eh? so that will be great but now let's move into advantages ah. Huh? empat ah. Huh? satu kill unnecessary pests okay, so you can kill number two should not bring negative effects. It won't bring negative effects. Number three, it will save costs. Number four, it will not pollute the environment. But since it has advantages, it must also have disadvantages. In this in this world, things work like that. If you ada kebaikan, you ada keburukan. Keburukan. So what happens is, it takes a long time to be effective. Because if you think about it, when you are going to spray this pesticide, immediately, the pest here, the pest here, here, is going to die is going to die because you are going to uh, uh, spray this uh, chemical pesticide on it so it's going to die yeah definitely for sure or even if it doesn't die immediately it will die one day or two days later but it, do you know that if you use this biological control let's say you put some owls uh, owls uh, owls you put into the ladang ladang kelapa sawit okay how long it may take months eh? it may take uh, let's say uh, weeks okay if better days, okay, maybe uh, six days, seven days, just for one rat or two rats to be eaten up by the owl. That means it's slow. It means it's slow. But if you use the chemical pesticide, maybe half a day, one day, two days, dah, semua hilang. If you use biological control, it will be slow. Because this owl have to go and eat the rat. And this owl is not rubbish bin, you know. It must eat, it must digest, it must fly around, get tired, sleep, wake up, hungry again. Then baru they can go and catch other, the new rat or new mice. Eh? So, that's why biological control will be slow. Okay? So, this part is where they will usually ask about Here, this is the best part to ask about Okay? So, let me tell you. If your teacher, it will be very good in setting cable question, biological control is the one you have to take care of. So, if you see example, owl controlling mice, yes. So, let's write out the relationship. Owl is going to be the, the predator. Mice will be the prey. Okay? Satu, makan. Satu, dimakan. Duck is going to be the predator. At the beside the river, at the pond there, going to be eating the snail. Ladybird is going to be the predator. Going to eat the aphids on the tree. Okay, so it's always going to be, always, ah, huh? always, ah, huh? always going to be a prey, prey, predator relationship. Always, there is no other relationship you can have to do this body control. Always a prey, predator relationship. Okay, okay, Tom, let's go to the second. Size of population, okay, size of population, okay. Now, diseases. Okay, so there are a few factors that affect the size of a population. So like I said just now, the size of the population or what we call the uh, amount or the quantity of animals that are in there. That's so size. What this size is talking about actually, uh, it is talking about the quantity, which is a bilangan. Or we're talking about the amount of these animals that are going to be in there. Or just living things as a whole. So what happens is there are four factors that will affect. Number one is going to be diseases. Diseases. Why? Because like this bird flu, it is going to kill is going to make the chickens sick chickens okay or birds as a whole it will make this make it sick okay pandemic pandemic means it's a breakout okay just like now the coronavirus we call it a pandemic a coronavirus pandemic because it's going to be very widespread okay it is uh, uh what do you call that uh, spreading very fast people are getting uh, sick a lot okay so, so we call it pandemic so it will reduce the chicken population number of chickens number of chickens will reduce number of chickens will reduce okay so this is a uh, the how it affect huh? how it affect the size is it reduce it reduce the uh, population of the chicken or reduce the amount or the number of chickens that are available 
Okay, so bird flu. What is another good example of this? Is the African, African swine fever. African swine fever. This African swine fever, last year in 2019, it broke out. Right? This African swine fever. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in many parts of China, the pigs were being affected. So what happens is, this African swine fever, it will not affect the humans. So humans, if they unfortunately have eaten this uh, 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 pigs which have this fever, takisah, because it won't affect the human system. But for the pigs, uh, once it transfer or it spread across pigs, it will make the pig sick. And, uh, and it will, uh, basically, you cannot sell the pig anymore. Because the health ministry, Kementerian Kesehatan, they will stop you from selling these pigs. So that time, what happens is, many, many of the pigs will die from this African swine fever because the pigs will, die, big, uh, will become sick and they will die. So what happens is, the, the, the governments of this, uh, you know, of the countries that are affected, they will either kill the pigs, straight away they kill the pigs because if you, if you kill it, then it cannot spread any more of the disease. So they will kill the pigs, all they will kill off. Eh? So you are going to uh, reduce the number of uh, pigs being affected. Uh, or even you are closing your borders. So that period of time, when this uh, African swine fever pandemic, uh, we could not bring uh, pig items or pork, pork products from other countries when you are coming into, uh, let's say, Malaysia. Hey, they will stop you at the customs there if you're bringing any of the pork items. Why? Because if you're bringing pork, let's say raw pork, okay? You, uh, you, uh, you went to China for a good vacation. Eh? Uh, uh, one day you, uh, go to, you go down to the, uh, to the pasar and you uh, want to buy their, their pork. Lah, eh? For some reason, you want to buy their pork. So, and you want to tapau, bring home. Okay? Bring home. Bungkus, you bring home. Then, at the airport there, you cannot... Uh, 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 stopped by the uh, customs or the immigration. Why? Because they know that if you are bringing this uh, piece of this raw pork into the Malaysia, into country, you are uh, might you might bring this uh, swine fever, and it will transfer or spread into other pox or other pigs in uh, this uh, Malaysia. Okay, and it will make the entire uh, uh, pig. Uh, business or this uh, 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 this uh, sector of this pig will be uh, merosot lah. Huh? This whole sector of uh, pigs will merosot because your pigs will die. Okay? So there's a number of of uh, of uh, pigs or the pig population who are going to be affected. Okay, so disease is number one. Number two, presence of predators. Presence of predators. So because we know that earlier on we talked about uh, uh, biological control, we talked about predator a uh, prey predator relationship. So we know that. Asakan, there is predator, there is going to eat the prey. So, when you have a big presence or high presence of this predator, what happens is, you are going to decrease. Decrease what? The number of prey. The number of prey being eaten. The number of prey is going to be eaten. Is going to be reduced. Such as the mouse. Mouse population, oh sorry. So, the, the, the prey is over this side. Now. This is the prey. So, what happens is, the uh, mouse population is going to decrease. Why? Because the cat is the predator. The cat is the predator. Because the eagle is the predator. So, eagle will eat the chicken. Cats will eat the mouse. So, this prey, prey uh, population will, will reduce. Okay? Okay, now, source of food. Source of food is, see, uh, the crow population is high in Malaysia because there is a lot of leftover food. When you uh, makan in the restaurants and you tak habis lah, ha, tak habis lah. Ha. Sometimes you go to a Chinese restaurant, let's say, they give you a big okay, mangkok nasi. Okay, they are not going to uh, serve the nasi. If you don't finish, if you don't finish the nasi, they are going to straight away, they buang into the tong sampah. Okay, then you are going to have the tong sampah. Tong sampah here. Okay, at the back of the, at the, back of the, the, uh, the restaurant. What happens is, you are going to have, okay, sisa makanan. Okay, on the floor. Here, there's a lot of makanan on the floor. And then here, maybe, there are also a pile of rice, a pile of leftover, the daging, all that. What happens is, do you know that the bird, the bird will actually come over, the bird will actually come over, and they will try to find the food here. They will try to eat the food that is left over here. So, this is where the leftover food come from. So, since there is a high amount of leftover food, what happens is the crow population will also increase because more crow can survive. Ada makanan boleh teruskan hidup. Yeah? So, that's why. Now, last one. A change of climate. Continuous drought to make soil infertile for trees to grow. Now, we know that 
for trees, which is a plant to grow, they need uh, water. Okay, water is a very important uh, thing for them to keep on growing. So what happens is when you have drought, which is uh, kemarau, musim kemarau. Okay, which is uh, during the time where there is no rain, when there is no water flowing at all, even to the point where you know the soil, uh, the soil, uh, the soil, uh, tanah, tanah, tanah can crack, you know, crack, retak, macam pasu bunga, no, we're going to crack. And what happens is this continuous means for months, you know, for months or even sometimes longer, few months, it will make this soil or the tanah infertile. Infertile maksudnya apa? Infertile maksudnya tidak sesuai. Tidak sesuai untuk tumbuh, tumbuhan uh, to grow. Okay? For this uh, plants to be able to grow in the soil. Okay? So these are the four main uh, factors. Okay? We call it factors that affect the size of the population. Okay? Now, once we're done with that, let's go to this k question. k question. Okay, so if you look at this kebab question, they are asking you to mark the points where you think the fertilizer has been added. So what happens is, you know that when you add fertilizer, the effect is what? The effect is the number of plants is going to increase. Okay, the number of plants is going to increase. Of course, that's the, that's the whole point of why you want to put fertilizer for the plants to increase. For the plants to increase, to, to have more of your plants. If you're planting this mango tree, you will put fertilizer for the, for the, uh, the tree to grow faster. No, or to have this, uh, or to have the plant, the mangoes, the mangoes, the, the, the fruit to have more. Okay? So let's say this number of plant X, let's say plant X maybe is paddy, or the plant X maybe is a flower. Okay? You want to, uh, you want to uh, sell more of this flower. So what happens is, you throw the seeds in the tanah there, and you spray the fertilizer for it to grow, for it to have more. So what happens is, let's look at the graph now. On the X axis, which is this one, uh, X axis, uh, which is the one, this horizontal one, we know that we are talking about time. That means when you are going towards there, it is uh, uh, increasing in time. So here is bulan satu, which is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, September, October, November, December. Eh? And after that, you are going to have the number of plant X on this Y axis, which is going to talk about what? The number of plant. So maybe 10 plant, 20 plant, 30 plant, 40 plant, 50 plant, 60 plant, 70 plant, eh? and so on and so forth. What happens is, when you are going up, means the plant, the number of plant, or the population, the size of the population is increasing increasing okay when it goes up so what happens is it asks you mark the points where you think is going to the fertilizer to be added so answer is here number one okay by the way it's a points uh, so we know it's two points uh. number two is going to be here do you know why number one and number two over there sebab once you add the fertilizer here it start to grow start to grow okay do you see that or not the size or, or the num size population or the number of plant increase because it was here it was here then now it become here number ke tak dari sini naik sampai ke sini this will be called the growth of the population and same goes to here original was here after they put the fertilizer it from here go up to here so what happens is that it also a growth of the population okay so it must be added here now question ask me why don't you add here why don't you add here? It's, it increase ma, increase ma from here also increase. Now the reason why you don't put here is because that is not the lowest point. That is not the lowest point. The what now I'm asking you back. If you are going to add it here, what happens to this part of the growth? All the plants here, the from where it suddenly from the sky drop down onto the tanah, is it? Cannot be right. It must be have a reason for it to grow. So what happens is. Since you cannot explain why there is going to be the tumbuh-tumbuhan yang berlebihan here, you are going to put the point here. When you put the point here, you know that slowly, okay, fertilizer, fertilizer come in, fertilizer, 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 fertilizer. Okay, then you will get more and more plants. Okay. Now, second, explain why it's added at those points. Okay, basically, I already explained. Okay, you need the fertilizer to take effect. Okay, for it to start growing, it need to take effect slowly day by day. It absorb the fertilizer, then it can grow. Nah? Okay, so it's at the lowest points there. Okay, good. Now, that's done. Now, let's look at the changes in the ecosystem. So, what happens is, this uh, ecosystem, we know that it must be balanced at all time. Uh, balanced in terms of all the components, living thing, non-living thing. Okay? We want this uh, ecosystem to be balanced. So, what happens is, sometimes it will change. Okay? Disruption, we call it. Disruption. Okay? Disruption that will affect the balance of the ecosystem or affect the normal condition, the normal situation, keadaan biasa. Ecosystem. What happens is, number one, limited water supply. 
So this is during the Muslim Kemarau, which I said earlier on, which is the drought, or even the opposite of drought, which is the uh, uh, Muslim, uh, this, uh, what do you call that, the Banjir, Banjir, which is the flood, Muslim Banjir, okay, every time Malaysia will be hit, a few of the countries, or no, st uh, countries, the uh, state, a few of the states in Malaysia will be hit by this uh, Muslim, uh, uh, this um, Banjir, because when they rain, keep raining, keep raining, especially at the end of the year, uh, going to the beginning of the year, Chinese New Year time, this uh, banje or this flood is terrible. Okay, it will flood. Okay, and then uh, the, all this padi definitely will rosak lah because the padi cannot be living in this uh, flood in the banje, so it will rosak. So it will affect the food chain. Eh, tak ada padi, then caterpillars cannot eat the padi, birds cannot eat the padi, chicken cannot eat the padi. So what happens is the food chain will be affected lah because we know that water supply it most likely will affect the producer. Okay, most likely it will affect the producer. And you know that producer is the beginning of the food chain because you're going to always have a producer then you're going to have more more animals more animals you're going to have the first consumer here second consumer here third consumer here so if you are breaking the link here huh, here tak ada, huh, what happens is the entire food chain at the back is going to rosak lah. hey, that's why it says it will affect the food chain now second animal migration will affect the animals animal migration means what perpindahan hey? Pindahan, pindahan or this migration of these uh, um, animals, which that means they move away, move away from the area. Maybe they live in this jungle, jungle A, we call it jungle A. Then after some time, they move over to jungle B. Eh? So what happens is, in jungle A, no more of this animal because they move already. Okay? So it will affect the animals as they have to relocate uh, from uh, one place to another. Okay? It will affect maybe the number of the animals. Eh? Or back in jungle A, which is the, the original place, maybe... It is also part of the food chain. Maybe it's a second consumer. Ah, if this second consumer it go away, pindah ke tempat lain. What happens to the third consumer? The third, the, the, the tertiary consumer. What happens to the tertiary consumer? Ah, that means the tertiary consumer no more food. So that is also what will affect the ecosystem. And the third one, the size of one population could affect the population size of another. Okay, same idea. So it's all about the food chain actually. First, okay, primary, secondary, tertiary. What happens if this secondary or, or tertiary suddenly meningkat secara mendadak? Suddenly, oh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 of these owls, eagles, snakes, whatever. Then what happens? The second, the chickens. How? All die, no? All the die. All die. What happens? This, go and eat this. Okay? This one, menurun secara mendadak. Okay? This will be all eaten. Ah, now you think about it. This is, I want to highlight k bad question. This is k bad question. Because when the tertiary consumer eat the secondary consumer, the sec now let's say the third consumer suddenly increase, ah, the secondary consumer will also be eaten more, eaten more, eaten more, eat more. So, secondary consumer also reduce. But, let's see, if the number of the secondary consumer also decrease, what happened to the first or the primary consumer? The primary consumer will also increase, will also increase. Why increase? Because the secondary eat less of the first. Because lesser secondary consumer, ma. if you have lesser secondary consumer, means less animals go and eat the primary consumer. So the primary consumer will definitely meningkat secara mendadak. That is why the hubungan of a food chain. That's why a food chain is important. The food chain cannot be broken. Okay? So this also came up question. Huh? Okay, now, let's see. I think we're into our last slide. Okay, we're into our last slide. Okay, so, um, changes in the ecosystem. Let's see. Now, there are also other activities that changes the ecosystem. Like what? Like, uh, forest logging, which means you are cutting the tree. Okay, forest logging. Okay, cutting off the trees. Or, industrialization. Industrialization means what? You are going to build the kilang or the factories. Okay, and what happens when you want to build factories? What happens? You need the land. You need tanah to build the kilang. So what happens is, you will chop off all the trees, kill off all the plants, get rid of all the animals, so that you can use the tanah to build your factory. So industrialization will harm the ecosystem. Okay, in terms of the plants, the trees that were there, or the animals that were there. Not just that, no, not just that. Keep up question, not just that. Industrialization also, it will release smoke, or release sisa-sisa toxic. Uh, ke dalam sungai. So what happens is when the animals drink the water, animals get sick. Right? When the animals breathe the, the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur monoxide in the area, they will also get sick. So there is the effect of industrialization. Now, construction of glass building, 
Okay, of course, definitely class buildings, it will also uh, change the ecosystem, okay, because of the uh, 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 the heat, okay, global warming effects. Okay, then uh, waste disposal, how we throw the rubbish, how we burn the rubbish as well, that's the problem. And also agriculture, okay, how we are going to uh, uh, plant these, uh, all the ladang uh, kelapa sawit, okay, how we manage this ladang kelapa sawit, it will affect the way ecosystem, the ecosystem works, okay. So these are the things that will affect now. These activities destroy habitats, eh? extinct flora and fauna, which is the plants and the animals. It eh? causes the greenhouse effects, okay? which, like I said, construction on the glass building. Eh? Uh, pollute water and ground and causes floods. Ah, waste disposal, by the way, causes floods because uh, if the rubbish we don't throw properly, it is going to uh, 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 sumbat the uh, longkang. Eh? So the parit is going to be sumbat and then it will cause flooding. Lah, eh? It will cause a uh, uh, flooding. Flash flood now, we call it flash flood. Okay? That means it happened very quickly, flash flood. Okay? So now, this also, these activities can be overcome by law enforcement, awareness campaigns, formal education, research and development, and usage of biological control. Okay? So, biological control, this is a good way, because we learned earlier on, and this is your, for your KBAT application. Okay? For your KBAT application. And uh, law enforcement, chapter 1 you already studied. Okay? Awareness, campaigns, definitely, formal education, research and development. So, this one, uh, this part, uh, this whole part here, they will ask you lah, maybe one question only lah in the exam. Hey, okay? one question lah. Even if you do your exercise book, they will only ask one at the very very end of the chapter. Okay, mostly all the chapters lah, especially the one that is the biology chapters, they will have this at the end one lah. So this one is the one that you need to only remember one or two things. Okay, what causes things? Eh, okay? and then how do you try to solve or how do you overcome these things? That's the only thing you need to know from this. Okay, it will earn you one one or two points lah. Huh? Uh, for your exam, okay. So that's all for the chapter. Chapter two, dah siap. Chapter two, dah siap. Next chapter, nutrition. So we're gonna move into next chapter very soon. Okay, that will be a very long chapter. A lot of things to memorize. So we will uh, move in there. Uh, we will see what other exercises we can uh, do to complete this chapter two. So until then, remember, study smart, study fast, and uh, you'll be number one. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.